Warning. Before we venture further into these subjects, I must warn you off. Practicing the dark arts can be highly dangerous. Alistair Crowley was born on the 12th of October, in 1875, in Leamington Spa, England. As we can see from his birth certificate, he was registered as Edward Alexander Crowley. The family derived from Celts, with the majority originating from Cork. In his own words, Alistair described his early ancestors as the branch of the family of Crowley to which this man belonged has been settled in England since Tudor times. In the days of bad Queen Bess there was a Bishop Crowley, who wrote epigrams in the style of marital. One of them, the only one I know, runs thus. The bods of the stews be all turned out, but I think they inhabit all England throughout. According to Crowley, in his Confessions, the head of the family came to England with the Earl of Richmond and helped make him king on Bosworth Field. Alistair Crowley was named after his father, Edward. An engineer by trade but due to the family's wealth, earned via Thomas Crowley, and his ownership of Alton Ailes, Edward, the elder, gave his time instead to a higher calling. A member of the Plymouth Brethren, Edward Sr. followed the work and teachings of John Nelson Darby, considered by some, to be the father of modern dispensationalism and mid to late Victorian futurism. Edward Sr. wrote on the evangelistic values of the church, published numerous times espousing the maxims and axioms of the brethren, and giving us an indication of the type of strict upbringing, which one could argue, later led to Crowley's extreme rebellious kickback, to the opposite pole. Shortly after Crowley's fourth birthday in 1880, his parents had another child, Grace, Mary, Sadly, she died within days of her birth and was buried in Southampton shortly after. Probably seeking an environmental change after the tragedy, Edward moved the family to Redhill, in Surrey, in 1881. Edward bought the Grange, a large property on Crab Hill Lane, South Nutfield. At the same time, evangelist educator, Henry Theodore Habersham, was preparing to leave his current position as schoolmaster, somewhat foreshadowing and aptly located on Snake Lane in Woodsbean. He moved to Hastings and began setting up his new school, the White Rock School, in what can be seen as perhaps another faint future esoteric echo of Crowley's early life. By 1884, Edward Sr. had answered an advert such as this. Habersham had well established his boarding school, at two White Rock Gardens and, Crowley began attending. Crowley claims, in his confessions, that he doesn't remember too much of the school or the man, but after a particularly harsh punishment, wished Habersham dead. Shortly after, in 1885, Habersham died. This would turn out to be a catalyst for Crowley, in a number of ways. Habersham left both the properties to his son, who continued to run the White Rock School, but Edward Sr. moved Alistair from the school, sending him off to Cambridge, to be schooled by another strict evangelist, Reverend, Henry Darcy Champney. In 1887, Edward Sr. died suddenly, at Glenburnie, in Southampton. His death was registered shortly after and he was buried at Southampton Cemetery, on Hill Lane. Crowley returned to Reverend Darcy Champney for further schooling, but after concerns about his health were raised by his uncle, Tom Bond Bishop, he left the school in 1888. The following year in 1889, Elizabeth moved the family to Streatham, London, closer to her brother. Crowley continued to be taught by private tutors over the next couple of years at home. Eventually, he was sent to lodge and be tutored in Tor Bay. At No. 5 Carey Parade, Alistair had his first major freeing experience, when lodging with a young philosophy teacher, James Douglas. He showed Crowley the other side of life, involving him in card games, smoking, and prostitution. After the Torbay experience, Uncle Tom convinced Elizabeth that young Alistair would be better served with a more traditional and formal schooling. In 1891, Alistair was enrolled by Tom at the prestigious Mulvern College. His experience there was short-lived, other than a football match, there are not really many records of his attendance. 
Crowley left there complaining of a culture of bullying and buggery, he was changed from Huntington to Faber's house, which could be an indication of support for his protestations. Crowley was part of the 1891 parade of cadets before leaving to head on to a summer on the Isle of Skye, where Uncle Tom once again, encouraged him to get out into the great outdoors to improve his health. In 1892, Crowley was enrolled at Tunbridge School, another prestigious private school, that would fail to be a good fit for young Alistair's increasingly rebellious ways. His love for the outdoors continued to flourish and during his Easter holiday of 1892, he climbed the four highest fells in the Lake District, Scafflepikes, Helvelin, Skiddor, and Saddleback all within 24 hours. Upon returning to school, Crowley continued to get into trouble, eventually being expelled by Headmaster Joseph Wood, for catching gonorrhea from a Glasgow prostitute. His name still made the alumni, presumably more in recognition for attending Trinity College, than any of his actions whilst at Tunbridge. In 1894, Alistair was sent to Eastbourne to board with Miss Shaw Lambert and continue his preparations for university. He briefly attended Eastbourne College and studied chemistry, but his love for climbing had taken over at this stage, having joined the Scottish Mountaineer Society. Crowley and his cousin during the summer of 1894 climbed the large white rock, Beachy Head. Many claim this was the first undertaking of this venture and Crowley wrote up his experience and supplemented it with images and it was included in the Scottish Mountaineer Club Journal. Crowley had been put forward for membership by John Norman Colley, as a keen and competent mountaineer. His exploits at Beachy Head, the second white rock of his childhood, had cemented his signal towards manhood. In the next episode, we will see that this passion for climbing continued, and in between his days at Trinity College Cambridge, and the drug fueled writing, his pathway leading to his occult ways, opened up. Welcome to Beyond the Veil. This channel, is designed for people with an interest in the esoteric arts and the subjects of the occult.